Hello everyone, it's Exo Man. Don't be alarmed by the messy kitchen behind me. I've taken all my spices out of the microwave. This is a new microwave. <clears throat> the old one was there. It, uh, it got burned up and it uh, needs to be replaced. And so we've got this one here. And what I've done is I have reconfigured this blower motor so that it blows out of the back. Yeah, I'm about to show you how to do that. I don't, I'm not sure. I think these microwaves come originally. I hadn't set this one up originally, but it, I think they come with the blower facing forward, like just this way, so that it comes out of the, out of the top here of the microwave. It vents out of here, it comes through this charcoal filter that's in here. You probably can't see that in there. <clears throat> and blows up, which would be up this way, okay? So now I, <clears throat> when I bought this house, these, uh, the people that lived here had had such a, a setup. You had the microwave just recirculating. The idea is it goes through a carbon filter and you're not supposed to get all that that stuff in your house, but I, I don't like that. It, it just seems counterintuitive to vent it inside the house. So I put in a, a chute here and, a, and a, you know, just a vent set up here. This is the old back brace for the old microwave. I'm going to just realize this one is a little lower, so I'm going to have to, this is the brace that comes with this one. So I'm going to have to put it Kind of about right there. So let's go ahead and uh, and show you exactly how to configure this to blow forward, out the back, or straight up if you want to vent through your cupboards and up through a roof vent. Okay, now th this is a Whirlpool microwave, and the one I had before was a Kenmore. They're all very similar. You're going to have a panel on top here. I've taken two screws out. Here and here and now I'm just going to remove this you see it's got little tabs that go in here remember how you've done this because it can actually be tricky um, the reason being is these plates are are made for I think several different models those go in there like so okay going forward all right so you got <clears throat> now what you got to do on this model, and it'll be something similar on yours, is you've got to get into here just with a screwdriver and get these screws out. I have a magnetic stubby right here, and I'm going to get these screws out here and here. You don't want to drop them into this cavity. Well, actually, you can't. There's a plastic liner in there. Okay, so you won't you won't lose them with with this. But it's good to have a magnetic screwdriver. So let's get those out. There, oh, there we go. Two screws. Now, I think this one right here. Yeah. There's, you'll find a couple of screws. There's one here and one here. Okay. I should be able to lift this out. Now, you've got a double blower with a motor in the center, right? So you're going to just lift this up. And now <clears throat> this, it can get tricky, so pay attention to what you're doing. Now, if you want it to blow up like that, I think what you need to do is let that wire go over the top. So, you see what I just did? You can get that back down in there and it's blowing up now, right? I just reconfigured it so this wire is going over the top. All right, now let's see how else we can do this. Now I'm going to turn it so that it blows forward through there. Okay. 
All right, and it just comes straight up out of there. So there you see, you see there's three different configurations. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do is get it back so it's blowing out of here, but obviously I can't do that because of that wire harness. I need that wire harness to go over the top, so I'm going to spin it around like that, see? And then drop it down in. Does that make sense? It's very simple. Okay, now we are ready to put the cover back on. There we go. Okay, so as I stated, this frame, this hanger, will not does not correspond with this microwave. You see, there these are the tabs that that go up into the slots right here. This is the back bottom of the microwave. So these slots are not positioned properly, right? So rather than trying to cut some of this tab off to make it work, <coughs> you see, I'd have to cut off quite a bit of that, that inch on the, on the left and over here an inch on the right or more. So instead of doing that and then being left with just a little bit of tab to hang from, <coughs> I will... I will make my cut on the microwave itself. In other words, I'll grind out more slot to fit this tab. And then I'll be grinding the slot bigger, coming about yay far with my grinder and about so far. And I'll just make sure there are no wires or anything down in here, anything important that I don't want to nick. And also, Sadly, I'm going to have to lower this an inch. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't love that here. But yeah, for the time being, this is what we're going to live with because I don't, they don't, I can't find a cabinet on the internet like a spice cabinet that I could put in here. And then what am I going to do for uh, if I put another one of these? Even if I could match it, this double cabinet here, 30 inches, <clears throat> I still have to put. Uh, ventilation over the stove so you know short of putting a very expensive uh, alternative kind of unit maybe through here or something I don't know I don't know what else to do One more thing before I mount this is I want to put some strips around the exhaust on the back of the microwave to fur this out a little bit to seal it, right? Because I, I can't see back there and I know that this is a distance from the wall here. So I want to just, and I've got just the thing that I can use as a cushion, so uh, as a seal. So let's go find that material. Okay, so we've all seen these uh, foam pads. I use this as a, I, I'm not sure what you call them, but I use this as a kneeling pad. I have several of them floating around for work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use this because it's nice and resilient, squishy. Uh, should make an excellent seal. I've, I've just scored a, a, a measurement that I need, and I'm going to cut that. There we go. That will be my seal. Okay, I just need 11 and a half and two and three quarter strips for vertical, and I'm set. The strips are in. Now, I, I just use short drywall screws. I don't want to mess with anything behind here. Uh, there's no wiring in behind here. Uh, but you want to countersink the screws. I did so because I want to make sure that the, the back of the oven seals. If you got screw stick head, head sticking forward, it's not going to seal. All right, let's get the microwave in place. Go ahead and run that cord through there. And rest the uh, slots on the back bottom of the microwave on the tabs on the mounting strip. Do that now. Okay. Pull this 
this through. Now I have this microwave resting on the clips, okay? And on this cutting board here, so it doesn't fall down and cause a lot of damage, hopefully. Uh, so what I'm gonna do at this point is figure out how to drill out, see, see these holes? There's a hole right here, right? And then there's one over here, see? So I have to locate the area in here, take all this stuff out, where I'm going to drill the holes for these bolts, because these bolts will hold the microwave up in this cavity, right? Don't want to do that. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to mark, I've marked right here and over here, I'm going to just take, I'm just going to take this square just to get a nice mark. We'll mark those like so, and then we'll carry that mark around onto the top. And uh, then we'll, then I'll measure back, see how far I have to go and put my hole. And now if you, if you, uh, if you don't exactly locate it, in other words, if you're just a little off, you can drill your hole bigger and you can always use a large, a large washer. You don't want a lot of bulk up here, but if it happens, it happens. Just do your, make your hole a little bigger and use a washer and you should be good. And a washer is good anyway. I mean, these are, these are nice wide head bolts, which will hold a lot of pressure, a lot of weight, but wouldn't hurt much to have a washer on screws in the top and we'll be done. We go ahead and test, just test it out for fun. I'll create a little smoke here and uh, see how the exhaust works. Now, when you screw these bolts in from the top, you'll see this gap right here just tighten up, okay? Let's, let's watch. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it pretty much looks like it's going up where it needs to go. These, these microwaves aren't great exhaust fans, but it works. It works. The microwave is in. A uh, couple of side notes. Uh, yes, this is a used microwave. I bought it for $80 on Craigslist. And it's about a $250 unit. All I need from this is the light and the fan. So it didn't even have to work. I've got to set the timer. But uh, isn't this great? And I have my spice covered back. You see? How cool is that? All right, and finally, I will explain that we use this as a spice cupboard because we simply don't use microwaves. The home was, the kitchen was designed for a microwave space, so that's what we have. Uh, the reason we don't use microwaves is because they restructure your food on a molecular level. And I can talk to people and they will listen as, the, as though they have not heard anything. So I won't go to, into too much detail, but yeah, it restructures your food, it destroys the nutritional value. So uh, it's just not, and that's, that's just science. Uh, that's what scientists say. Um, so we don't use it. We know we've got, that's what we have this for. So, all right. Well, thank you all for watching and uh, good luck with your projects.